What's up everybody? So, I just wanted to go ahead and do another response video. These probably happen more often. Uh, just because there's more, there's, every time I see something I'm like, no, that's not what it means. And then I have to go over and talk to myself or something. <laughs> but um, this should be a rather short one. So I have a friend, oh, sorry, I just got this thing. But anyway, <laughs> I have a friend online. Uh, basically, she's a Christian, she says. and But she's very much into the Black Lives Matter thing. She thinks that it is totally worth it for everybody to just do whatever they need to do to make sure, you know, everybody has justice. As long as that everybody is black. So, she says not, but the only person she talks about are black people. So, whatever. To me, that's a little racist, but okay. <laughs> but anyway, um... Here's how I'm going to say this. I'm going to quote her, and then I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And I just want to let everybody know, I don't, I don't hate this person. I don't, I just like her a little bit, but I don't hate her. I understand where she's coming from. She is trying to come from a place of, you know, making sure everybody is taken care of and that everybody, you know, gets justice and everything. But it's just, it's very, very misplaced. And she's just very wrong in how she's going about doing it. So here's what she says. I feel like anything I say will just seem glib and or ignorant because I don't truly know. I can't know what the black community is feeling right now. Okay, so to me, this is the this is the beginning of the separation, right? This is the separation of I don't know what these people feel. And I just have trouble with just that right there. You obviously know what people feel like if you know that people think a certain way. So for example, this is what she thinks. She thinks that people who just have a certain skin color get upset or mad when somebody else they don't know who have a, has another skin color, they then get upset. Like if they, they die. Well, let me, let me restart because that was awful. Okay. So <laughs> she thinks that people who have the same skin color. If one person dies, even if this person over here doesn't know this other person, they're going to get upset because they share skin color. I hate to break it to people, but that only happens in this small area of places. There's like maybe one or two places where that exists. Where you can not even know someone and because you share this one thing with them, you then feel like your whole family or a part of your family just died. Uh, so the phrase black community for me is just awful. I give this example all the time to people out West. You don't have this in the Midwest. You don't have this and not because there aren't people who are black there, but because people there don't say to themselves, because you share this one physical attribute with me, now you're part of my family. Hey, okay. skin color is a physical attribute that people cannot do anything about. They're born with it. They could maybe like tan or diet or whatever, but you're born with the skin that you're in. Okay. So for me, every time I hear the word black community, that to me just means absolutely nothing. Like it just, or depending on the context, it could mean that the group of people who are upset that someone died. I am not happy that people die for stupid reasons or for unjust reasons or for even, you know, I accept natural reasons. I'm not happy that people die for, for doing their own stupid thing, but that doesn't make me part of a community. It just makes me a human being, just a normal person. Okay. I don't want people's families to be separated by death, but it is a natural thing that it goes through. So to me, this right here is just, you're just trying to separate us now. You know, I can be upset for you that somebody you loved died, but if you're going to get upset because somebody you shared a physical trait with, I have to wonder what is going on with you. It would be like if somebody who had blue eyes died and I got upset because that blue eyed person died and that's part of my blue eyed community. That's weird. Okay. So what, so what's going on in that, that mindset where you have to separate people and be upset that only these group of people that share this physical attribute with you is dead. Like, 
You should be upset that people die and that this separation hurts people. You can do that. But to say that it has to be part of a community or whatever, that's just weird to me. That's just, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? And so to me, it also smacks again of racism or any of these isms, basically just not a good thing because you're taking people and putting, saying that once again, I guess they're taking people and saying that these people, it's more important that this person died and not the other one. Because in a lot of these, in a lot of these rants that she goes on, it's responses to like a cop shooting someone or cop killing someone or something like that because again just like a lot of the church right now she only goes over stuff that's popular to talk about instead of actually trying to fix anything so that that right there just puts me off immediately the black community why aren't we all in a certain community why aren't we all as human beings hurt by something where if if what did happen is somebody was unjustly killed. Why are we all hurt by that? Mm, yeah, we are. None of us like to see injustice. And that's why part of this could actually be, could actually, this is why I understand why she is so upset because she doesn't want things to be unjust. But in doing so, she is she is asking people to be racist and saying, well, but just look at the black side of it. Not the cop side, not the white side, none of this. Not, hey, these two people made two choices that are bad. Just look at the black side. And that's nonsense. It is a nonsense that's used to divide us and have us fighting and screaming at each other. And I'm sorry that she believes this to be the case. So, I'm sorry that was a little rambly, but it's just... That mindset really gets to me that there is a community that you have to side with based on your skin color or any other physical attribute. And that if you don't have that physical attribute, there's absolutely no possible way you could understand people being upset. I don't understand it because I don't understand why somebody would take somebody's physical attribute and say, hey, I'm now going to side with you over everybody else and be sad about you, but nobody else because of a physical attribute that you have. That's dumb. It's, but anyway, I can understand people being upset because somebody died in an unjust way because injustice is wrong. So anyway, let's continue. So she says, all I know to say is I care. I'm trying. I'm having the tough conversations, implicating myself with friends and friends and family and my kids. I'm asking the Lord to reveal and remove racist ideas and motives from deep in me that we all have in our culture. Denying it makes it worse, not better. So I can never get a straight answer about what she means by the racist ideas in our culture. Uh, So I'm going to tell you a story. Just to sort of get you acquainted with me a little bit better and why all this seems super crazy to me. So I grew up out west. So out there, nobody talks about the color of your skin. Nobody's like, well, you're a cowboy and you're not so you're awful it is just that you're a cowboy is just a fact about you it's not something that they try to categorize you and then put you over here and stuff like that it's just that's just who you are because nobody out there cares i mean we just that nobody cares as long as you you know we'll, we'll help you if you're down protect each other from harm, manage our communities from outside harm, which is another story I could tell you, but it didn't matter what color you are, you know, what job you had, whatever it was, as long as you adhered to being a good neighbor, okay, then that's what people cared about. Those are values. Those aren't physical attributes. That That's an, an ethic that people in a different place in America subscribed to. Okay. You can't divide those people because they all have a history of helping one another. They know each other and their kids play together. And even if the kids didn't play together, they still knew each other. When someone starts trying to start a conversation based on skin color, which some people did try, I had, I'd heard that before. They are told to get the F out of here at that nonsense, because that's what it is. It's nonsense. All right. Nobody cares that John down the road has a deeper color of skin than me. 
Nobody cares even if you're poor. Nobody cares if you're rich. What everybody cares about there is how do you treat me? What is your, um, how do you ethically treat me? That's what people care about. So once I moved to the East Coast, that's when I started hearing about this carousel ride of conversation about race. Uh, This idea is a false one. I believe, planted into the East Coast to have this constant conversation of, well, I'm black and you're white, and that means this. No, it doesn't. It means that I'm a person who has less melanin than you do, and now we both have to navigate life with all the same challenges. People say, well, no, they have different challenges. Show them to me. You know, I've had somebody tell me that racism is when you walk into the store, people look at you. When I walk into the store, people look at me. Like, what... There needs to be, if you're going to say that walking into a store makes a place right and getting looked at makes a place racist, then you're going to have to give me more than that. Like, what is the deal here? Everywhere I go, if I walk in, everybody around looks because they're trying to see who's coming in. You know, what are these people? Who is this person? Are they okay? Is there nothing wrong with them? You know, what is it? You're a new thing in the situation that these people were just part of. Sorry, I keep hitting that. It's new and I just... <clears throat> so to me, it's just it's just an idiotic way of looking at things. As soon as... It, or a very selfish way. Because as soon as you walk in someplace, people look at you, they, they, they look away. Or they look at you. I've had people tell me that they have looked at them, gave them a sneer, and then looked away. It's like, okay. I mean, I could get that everywhere I went. It wouldn't bother me at all because that's, that's their problem. It's not my problem. Um, so I haven't heard anybody say, or anybody tell me a story where they were refused service because of their skin color. They were, didn't get a job because of a skin color. None of that. So again, like, I'd like to know where this is because I don't see it. But this is the conversation that happens in the East Coast and in these liberal cities where they're constantly saying that things happen because a person is a color. And I just don't see any proof of that. I'd like to see some. If it's really there, then that is ridiculous and wrong. It should stop. But there isn't really any. I mean, just treat each other individually the way God wants you to and you're going to find change there. This doesn't have to be this conversation about, well, I have to have this conversation because black people exist. No, you have to have a conversation about how every single one of us are image bearers of God because that's the truth, not because we have different colors. God was like, hey, I'm going to make them all different colors. Sorry. And then gave us great variety out there of eye color, hair color, skin color, colors of nails, colors of all kinds of stuff. Uh, There are people out there with two different eye colors. I have two different hair colors that go through there. I've actually got about four. And that's actually pretty average for people when you look through it. Okay. This thing about color, this thing about race and everything, it should not be embraced at all. It shouldn't there, this conversation should not even be happening because it would, because it's so ridiculous. It's like saying people with blue eyes get looked at more. So we're being, um, these people are iest or something, you know, it's just a ridiculous, it's ridiculous nonsense. So she continues, stop with the idea that anyone looks like they did it. That's ignorant. Stop with the idea that even if they did do it, which we should never assume, they somehow don't deserve a fair trial. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? And even if someone is guilty, they are still a human life, still valuable to God and should be to us. Pray about it, weep over it, I know I am. So I have to say that I agree with the premise of innocent until proven guilty and that life has value no matter where you're housed. But that assumption of innocence is for everyone. Should we not assume then that every situation is a tragedy of errors and be said it happened? Instead, uh, instead, you know, my friend pushes you to think of only one side. So she's not saying, you know, the cop uh, just may have made a bad choice. Maybe he just did this, that, or the other. Maybe he didn't 
kill this person as far as murder. Maybe he didn't murder this person. Maybe it was all an accident. None of that is there. This is only for one side. And this is what gets me all riled up. Because when people are like, yes, this one, this one, they only want to talk about one side. They never want to say, well, it's possible that the cop didn't do this on purpose. It's possible this is not a murder. Or even then be sad for the cop's family because the cop, let's say, decided to murder someone is now putting his family in a really bad situation. And now these kids grow up without a dad, this mother, you know, and wife goes on without her husband. Those are not good situations either. Why isn't that sad? And this is why, kind of why I don't do too many of these because I, I can get really rambly. But it's like when you, when you start hearing people say this life matters or this, we have to have this over here or this over there and this start and they start pointing fingers and saying this, I have to pay attention to this one thing. You might want to start asking why they want that because what happens next afterwards, after we have all this, where she's, she's talking about how sad she is and how she's looking at herself in the mirror to make sure she's not a racist and all this stuff. After that, what comes after that usually is the idea that now maybe I should be punished because I maybe had a thought one time that was wrong. Okay. So if I can be punished, it's okay then to be, um, violent towards me. And that's why this is so dangerous. It's not dangerous to look at yourself and go, Oh, maybe that thought's not a good one. Uh, maybe I should do a different thing, think a different way. Maybe, um, what I said there might've been insensitive, even if it was true. The Bible has this whole concept of you can say the truth all you want, but if you're not saying the truth in love, it doesn't matter. If you don't have love, you don't have anything. So how you talk to people, when you come to them with the truth, et cetera, matters. Um, <clears throat> And then with the Bible, it says in love. Okay. So for stuff like this, for me, I just can't, I can't understand it. One, not because I don't go through it, but let's, let's, I don't go through it. I don't have anybody come up to me and say, well, you're white, blah, blah, blah. But I've seen that in places and I'd be like, oh man, if I was in that position, then that would be upsetting to me. But also, if I was in the position that any of these people claim that they were in as far as, well, you can't have this job because you're black, that would upset me too. Like, you don't have to be of a certain color, of from a certain place to understand and put yourself in that person's shoes. And it just seems to be that that is what people who support the Black Lives Matter, whatever you want to call it, I say a terrorist group. But if you want to support them, that's what you have to say. You have to say that this is a unique situation that only exists for these people. And so we need reparations. We need to destroy this. We need to have this. You need to give it to us. And it's all about us. Um, no. Okay. No, no. And double no. I just don't. If you want there to be justice in the world, I'm, I'm all right behind you. If you want people to know that they can have this job based on their qualifications, I'm all behind you for that. If you want somebody to be able to work, no matter you know who they are, where they come from, et cetera, I'm all behind you for that. As soon as you start saying, well, because one time one person did a bad thing, now you owe me, that's when I leave. And I will, I'll never stand behind somebody for that. I have had people tell me all kinds of things. You have to give me this. I deserve this from you, etc. And I've told every one of them to go jump off a cliff because I don't owe anybody anything. I did not do this bad thing to you. If a bad thing was even done, I don't, I didn't do it. So I don't owe that to you. If somebody, you know, I've had experiences before I've already told my experience from my brother where, you know, it was a black cop that arrested my brother. It was a black woman that, you know, accused him of something he didn't do and all of that. The black cop went over his, you know, stepped over his ability to do what he was supposed to do. And I don't look at black people and go, well, you owe me something now. Why? Because that, because 
black people in general didn't do that to me. That guy did. That woman did. And I don't even, and the way I work is, since you're, that's the way you're going to be, I just want you to go away. You don't owe me anything, just leave. <laughs> because you do not have a just mindset. Your mindset is all about, well, this person said something and I'm just going to believe it because they look like me. Go away. Okay. <clears throat> My Christian side says, you know, we should talk about this and figure out why you think that you should just believe somebody because they look like you. Because that's not what God says at all. But, you know, like I also said in that video, though, it was a older black gentleman who helped my dad when my dad had to be the one to go find out what actually happened because the cop did not want to do his job. <clears throat> um, who helped us figure out that that you know, um, oh gosh, <laughs> I just had a brain fart. Okay. It helped me, it helped us figure out that the mailbox that was on the ground had been on the ground for probably two or three weeks and she didn't give any, she didn't care at all. She just saw two people walking down the road who were kids. I guess my, my brother looked the youngest because the other guy she, he was walking with was bigger, taller, etc. And, um, said, okay, well, I'll just have him pay for it. And that is lazy, it's rude, it's wrong, it's downright evil because you lied and then you're going to now steal from somebody else. Just fix your stupid mailbox. Like, So, I mean, this doesn't mean, though, that now I don't like all of the people who look like them. That would be stupid. These two people did something wrong. I don't like those two people too much. There is a bridge, I think, for me, if I were to ever come across them again. But why, like this whole idea out here that people have to be grouped into like these physical body things that we have is ridiculous. And it's not one shared out here everywhere else. It is only shared in these areas where these liberal uh, ideas have taken over. So if you're in the Midwest and you're, or you're out West, these things don't exist there. At least they didn't when I grew up. Maybe they do now because, you know, there's that California exodus to Texas and Arizona and all these places where they have all these conservative things. But not growing up with that mindset means that when I got here to the southeast or whatever you want to call it, uh, South Carolina, basically, that mindset's weird to me now. So now you got all these people separated because of a physicality they had nothing to do with in the first place. And there's no reason for it at all. And that's what this Black Lives Matter thing does. Look at what she's saying. She's very, she's all, she's just sad. She's just torn up. She doesn't want to look at reality. She doesn't, she just doesn't want to do that. She just wants everybody to be happy and all this stuff. It's like people are not going to be happy their whole lives. They're going to have moments of happiness. They're going to have moments of sadness. They're going to have moments of stupidity and all this stuff. Anyways, guys, like I said, this, this kind of stuff is kind of turning into a rant, but, um, I'll probably do another one of these cause she posts these rather often, I guess you could say. Um, just what do you think? Like, I, I can't stand this conversation about race because to me it's pointless. All it does is divide people. If you are a person who's following after God's heart and you're trying to live the way the Bible does, even if you don't believe in it, so like not lying, not stealing, you're trying to be just, you're trying to do all this stuff, we're going to get along. And that's just the way it is because that is how people get along. So, I mean, that is what I'm worried about. I'm more worried about what your morals are where you got them from, why you think the way you do, then you are the way you look or how you even talk or any of that stuff. Uh, what do you think? What is the, what is, when you see this stuff, what do you think about it? And thanks for watching guys. If you found this interesting, please leave me a comment or if you thought I'm stupid, leave me a comment there too. <laughs> I'd love to hear that too. Uh, okay. And, uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye.